Hey, Tom Rabbit, I hope you got this for your recording. Hey, YouTube out there, Tom Rabbit likes to record these. Hey, Tom Rabbit. You, you literally could not defend it. It was recorded and it's on YouTube. You have a very different tone now than you did then, Darth. Why is that? Uh, notice how the deflection, would you mind answering the question? I mean, I, I don't think it's an, a question worth answering. So you want to answer mine? Why is it not worth answering? You continue to promote yourself as an atheist. You put it on a book, an atheist guide to the Old Testament. Did you read I'd it? I'd like to know you... what the rational... No, I haven't, I haven't had the pleasure yet of reading it. What I'd oh, like hell. to know from you is how you rationally justify atheism. Because when I spoke with you for an hour, you were completely unable to defend atheism. I mean, I think you and I remember that conversation differently. Mm -hmm. And it's recorded. Hey, Dr. Josh, how do you define atheism? Do you use the positive disbelief or the lack of belief definition? Uh, I mean, I haven't really thought about that an awful lot. Uh, I guess well, I would you say... you made yourself clear in our interaction that you were just merely withholding judgment. Well, that's pretty but I pointed easy to out to you, but I pointed out to you that it's impossible to be neutral toward God. No, it's not. No, it is impossible because of the category that God is in. You can be neutral about many things, but you cannot be neutral toward God because God is defined as the ultimacy of reality, the necessary precondition of all um, contingent things. So, if you withhold belief from that, then you will consequently believe in the independence of facts from God. Well, it's only by your definition. So your definition no. could be true or false. So I can hold an agnostic position no. on whether or not your definition no. is true or false. Let me explain false. it to you. I've explained this to you before, but I'll explain it to you again. Okay. Facts can only, uh, if, for example, facts are context specific. Okay. Unless, of course, the fact in question is that which is transcendentally ultimate and requires no uh, independent external um, context. So generally facts are context specific. Those facts, if they are indeed facts, will either exist within the metaphysical realm of dependence or derivation from God or not. It's a true dichotomy. If you purposely withhold belief in God, that God is the necessary precondition or the ultimate metaphysical context, then by default, whether you admit it or not, you will believe in the independence of facts from God. Are you kind of withholding judgment on the boat on both? So I'd sides? like to know from Josh. I'm still waiting. Um, that's why I came in here. I'm You're going to be waiting, waiting for a while, buddy. Okay, I don't talk so, to people so that have words, your time. So, so in other words, so in other words, you continue to promote yourself on all the talking head YouTube atheist shows as an atheist, and yet you have no <laughs> rational defense of atheism. No, he actually did by his definition, but Darth, your definition of God is wrong. Your presupposed definition doesn't apply, and so we don't need to adopt your definition in order to define God. How, how, is, it, how is it wrong? Uh, the fact that defining God as the precondition for all facts is just false. Like I can say that how? is your preconceived definition. How is it false? Because it's your preconceived definition, but we can just have a how different is that definition. doesn't make it false? Uh, your presupposition saying it's a requirement for knowledge is false that's the false i didn't thing. say that what i said what i said is the god in thing? philosophy unless unless we're talking about a creature that has superpowers generally when we talk about god we're talking about that which is eternal and the creator and the source of all possibility no now, so that's how not is you may not you may not you may not accept that definition. Philosophy doesn't. But it doesn't. Would not. you not? Would you not fucking over talk with me? I've no. dealt with you twice before, and no. you're obnoxious. If you say a okay? fact, that's wrong. Okay, listen. Please don't over talk me, or so, I won't waste my uh, time. I'll just get out of then. If you're going to be an asshole, you like you were the first two times I talked with you. Okay. Bye. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. A fact. What God is not the necessary precondition for all facts, and that's not a thing in philosophy. Precept is pretty much rejected by most philosophers, so that's kind of a joke. Anyway, who else wants to speak? <coughs> Any questions? Anybody who joined the stage? Questions? Christian, Christian, how's it going? I'm doing well, man. How about you? Doing good. I'm doing really good. Finally got my depression fixed. I have not. I have felt really phenomenally good and just kind of ambivalent 
for the past few months. I'm like, I don't even know what to feel anymore because I haven't felt any depression at all. Good for you. That's very good. How's it going, Dr. Josh? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I guess I don't really have any questions, but uh, we had an appearance from the one and only uh, Darth Dawkins, which is always a treat for nobody involved. <laughs> um, so... Well. It's a yeah, treat it for my bank account because I get lots of views. So. <laughs> it's going to make a great YouTube clip, I'm sure. Yeah. Dude, that guy, like, I, I don't necessarily understand anything really with religion or, or any of that. Like, I just believe mostly in karma. Neither does he, so you're on the same footing. But, like, that dude was just like, <laughs> I, I can't even put into words. I don't think I think he real? disproves karma because if karma was real, he would have been hit by a car a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> a, car, a, car, I, a car, I think I'm pretty sure would have been like a semi. So I got I got to ask you, Doctor Josh, what compelled you to enter in the arena of combat with Darth Dawkins for an hour? That is an entirely fair question. Uh, so the the short version is it was the first time I'd gone into might have been the first time I'd gone into Discord. At least I hadn't been into a Discord in over a year. And I think it was ours that I went into the first time. So I just I never went into Discord. And I went in that morning first to Tom Rabbits. And I didn't I don't think there was anything going on. So I went into um uh what's it called? one that he's always in uh politics and religion yeah um and i was getting a cup of coffee like waiting for a meeting to start and i was just there to listen in and it was a really cool conversation going on and i don't know 10 or 15 people or something and it's just really nice so i listened for about 20 minutes and went on my way uh, so that afternoon i was doing some paperwork i thought yeah, I know. listen in see what they're talking about so i clicked back in and here I'm doing this paperwork and like two minutes later, he's like, oh, is that, is that digital Hammurabi, Dr. Josh? And, you know, can you defend your atheism? And I'm like scrambling to find the unmute button. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, I'm just, I'm just here to listen in. And I don't know. I don't know. You, 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 sh you need to defend your atheism. So it's like, well, I'm not a philosophy person, but I don't know. I, I try. It seems, it seems as though that seems to be the the preferred strategy of the darth is finding people who are either at at least surprised perhaps even ill-equipped to handle his weird you know completely nonsensical version of philosophy of religion and then he provides those presuppositionalist arguments to the least common denominator which is his audience and then you know advocates for them rather vociferously on the discord and then almost almost certainly interrupts you the second you start talking so i i don't, I don't blame you for for not it engaging was, in that it was odd because the reason i asked him why his tone had changed is like it was it was actually very friendly i mean i haven't heard a lot of darth dawkins but you know i was i was sort of surprised at how you know um uh, I don't want to say he, he was assertive. But I didn't find him aggressive, um, which is why him coming in here sort of like a freight train was. I, I feel well, surprising though, to me. I feel as though you'd appreciate this analogy. Imagine you know the tiger hunts its prey, starts off very meager, and 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 almost sulks sulks towards its prey at the very beginning. I think Darth has the same approach where the niceties exist only to service. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. This is why I refer to him as autistic, right? Because it, it's not that he's stupid. It's just that he just doesn't know how to relate to people. He's very robotic. He just makes up stuff. And then when you point out that he's making it up, he just makes up more stuff. And then when you point out that's made up, then he just rabbit trails. Well, actually, right. he'll just lie. You, you'll point out he made it up. You'll say, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. Just no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. He's like that character played by Martin Short on Saturday Night Live, uh, Saturday Night Live the guy who would chain smoke. He would be a lying lawyer for the tobacco companies. But he decided 
that he didn't want Dr. Josh Bowen humiliated. And Josh Bowen refused to defend his atheism again, right? And he goes, well, you have a markedly different tone of voice now, You could, with different tone of voice. Oh, he pulled a Canadian Catholic, didn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the point, the point is they have orgasms over saying atheism is a lack of belief. They will vociferously defend that you can withhold judgment from God. And I simply pointed out you can't, okay? And uh, you see, I, when T-Jump says it's wrong, all I have to simply say is, okay, do you positively believe that what is fundamental to all contingent states that is indeed eternal and transcendentally necessary for all contingent states is a mind, okay? And if they say no, say, good, that's what I'm referring to as God, and you do not believe in that, all right? One thing you can learn, my fellow believers, and those of you who may be on the verge of becoming believers, atheists to one degree or another are pathological liars, okay? And they're shameless about it. And we saw it on full display again. Here we have a guy who is an Assyriologist. He writes a book attacking the Bible, the Atheist Guide to the Old Testament. He goes, did you read it? And I said, no, I haven't had the pleasure of reading it yet. I said, but I'd like to know why you're calling it an Atheist Guide when you cannot defend your atheism. You can't give me a rational accounting for it, right? And he categorically, before I got kicked, absolutely stated he refused he was going to talk with me. Well, if it's not uh, rational, what kind of guide is it? I wonder what kind of guide it is. If it doesn't have any rational justification for atheism. Yeah, here's, here's a little prince that they circulate around all of the atheist YouTube YouTube shows, okay? Dr. Josh Bowen, the Assyriologist, and Dart Dawkins parachutes in and Hey, Josh, remember our conversation? You couldn't defend your atheism at all. Can you defend your atheism now? And he categorically refused to defend it, okay? And wow. I was in hostile territory, folks. The clamshell couch boy jumped in, really, before you could do anything. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, why would somebody object, uh, such as T autistic jump? Why would he say it's wrong for me to define God? Okay. After all, doesn't he believe that people have a right to define atheism for themselves? He's a, he's a, he's a contrarian. That's why. Of, of, of course he is. This is why it is so odious. Okay, talking with that autistic clown. Okay, there's nothing that will get my indignation indignation fired up more than somebody who is purposely devious and and decept deceptive and just makes up crap as they go along. Because the point is, you know, it's it's always like, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Right. But they're nowhere near as nefarious as that fake it till you make it T jump. Don't you love? He goes. That definition of God is wrong. <laughs> Well, T jump is, is just on a, T jump is just on another level when it comes to intellectual heel dragging because most people will drag their heels when you explain to them how they're actually denying God. Then they'll drag their heels. T jump drags his heels as soon as you define God, right? As soon as you describe the concept of God, he says that's not that's not right. That's not the right description of God. Oh, oh, so so would you would it make you feel better if I define that which is eternal and the source of all possibility in a mind, the boogeyman? Would that make you feel better? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it when he said he goes, that definition. I go, what makes it wrong? Okay, and I repeated myself several times and he couldn't tell me why it was wrong. He just kept I, on saying it's a wrong definition. I, I don't even think a definition can be wrong because it's just a description of a concept. You might not believe it's actual. Well, well in but all how in is all it wrong? in all fairness, it could be wrong in the sense that we are are using a widespread uh, word and we're defining it contrary to its widespread usage, and we're simply using it in a, pri a proprietary sense without uh, explaining that we're, you're using a non-standard definition. Yeah, you're using it in an deceptive manner. You're equivocal. Right. I'm not, I'm not using the word God in a non-standard way. Yeah, that, would okay. be, that would be the concept of God that Muslims, Christians, Jews, yeah. 
all all would agree with generally. So in one sense, a definition can't be wrong, but in another sense, it can, right? Because if you're going to, if like, if I talk to you that I had cake for dessert tonight, right? And then later on, you find out that I'm defining it as dog food, right? If I didn't tell you ahead of time, then that definition would be wrong, right? It sounds you like to me he had. It, sound, it sounds like no, to me he had. It sounds like to me he had an idea of what the correct definition was. In order for you him to say that it was wrong in the first place, then if you're it, pressing well, listen, him on this, he's not answering the question. The reason the reason why it is so annoying to talk with him is because he's so monotone in his autistic response, and he just makes up crap as he goes along. I mean, if, look, if you don't believe me, just watch his, him and his interaction with Dr. James Anderson, okay? Dr. James Anderson is a professional theologian and philosopher, and he would argue with almost everything Dr. James Anderson said. He was just a contrarian, right? This is what imbeciles do, but he was just running cover and white knighting for Dr. Josh Bowen, and Interestingly enough, I go into enemy territory. I challenge one of their biggies. Okay, he's a prince among all the atheists. And I'm like, hey, you couldn't defend atheism. Do you want to defend it now? And he completely tapped out like a scared Girl Scout. But you know what? I confronted Dr. Josh Bowen tonight saying, you know, we talked for almost an hour and you couldn't defend the rationality of your atheism. Would you care to defend it now? And he categorically refused. And I was in enemy territory and he wouldn't do it. He had the protection of, of atheist mods and he still wouldn't defend it. Okay. And this is a clown who writes a book, The Atheist Guide to the Old Testament. Right. I also the and vast majority of atheists I've talked to were trolls. Not all of them, but most of them were. Probably 90%. And you know what he did? Rather than say, well, you know what? I really thought about our conversation, and I, I, I think I can give a rational defense of atheism, and, and here's what it is. No, you know what he does? He gaslights. Oh, you, 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 have, a, you have a nasty tone of voice, okay? You, you, you're having a bad attitude, right? See? Gaslighting. Right. And this is their <laughs> beloved. This is their beloved atheist, a seriologist. OK, he's called on the carpet twice to give a rational defense of atheism and he taps out. And what happens? He gets T jump to white knight for him and boulder dash as he usually does. Oh, that definition of God is false. Hey, so Darth, so, Darth so you so says T jump the solipsist, right? The solipsist who says the only thing he knows is his consciousness, and he tells me that my definition of God is false. Hey, Darth, so you went into one of the atheist circles? I Which went one was into it? the T-Jump server because I was told that Dr. Josh Bowen was in there. So I jumped in. I went into enemy territory, knowing full well that what was going to happen, right? And yeah. Josh Bowen failed miserably. You know, it's like somebody tripping and getting a concrete facial. He tried to gaslighting me, gaslighting me, and I pointed out that he was gaslighting me. Then T Jump decided to white knight for this guy. He oh, you gave, a, you gave a wrong definition of God. Really? Defining God as the eternal creator and the source of all dependent facts? That's the wrong definition of God? Wow, you could have fooled me. Did okay. you record it? Uh, no, unfortunately, I. Um, I, somebody informed me that it was over there and I didn't want to miss the opportunity. So I jumped in and I should have recorded it. Hopefully somebody did record it and it will show up maybe on Tom, Tom Rabbit's channel. By the way, did you get that Tom Rabbit?